Hello there, this is David Hayden Jones, otherwise known as Mr. Ketch on Supernatural, and you are listening to Neil Before Pod. Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Neil Before Pod interview segment. I'm your host Craig McKenzie and I'm here talking to Echo Kellum who plays Curtis Holt aka Mr Terrific on the CW show Arrow. Speaking as a fan of the show it's a genuine pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to a series regular on one of my favourite shows. So here I am wishing him a warm welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you on. So how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's quite, quite late, time zones and all that. It's quite good, but uh, oh yeah, getting there. <laughs> so I uh, understand that uh, season six production starts today. Um, are you at all involved in that? Uh, I'm not involved in the things that are going on today. Um, I can't really talk too much about season six, uh, as we not. all know, yeah. Uh, yeah. that we're all dead <laughs> <laughs> on the island at the end of season five. Um, but, uh, yeah, they are revving up, getting season six going. Um, I'm sure they will definitely touch on exactly what happened, uh, but I'm currently not out there working today. Cool. Yeah, I saw the title was revealed about half an hour ago or so, uh, Fallout. Yeah, so. was it Fallout, something like yeah. that? Yeah, I saw that yeah. on Twitter, so not quite an exclusive, but close. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This season is going to be phenomenal. Like, just from things that I've heard about kind of where they're going, it seems like it's going to be a really, really, really dope, cool place to take it. And you really get to see Oliver really go through things he hasn't went through in the series before. And a lot of the characters are coming back as well. So I, I really can't wait to people start seeing how the season's like really coming together. Yeah, and it's the first one where the shackles are off as well. There's no flashbacks to fall back on. It's just kind of do something new this year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, yes. I know they will use flashbacks in different episodes or whatnot to tell the character stories or to kind of see things that might have happened last season that we didn't notice or whatnot. Or it, it was very much like how you know you saw with Renee last year and you had the flashback with his daughter and yeah. the episode in the bottle when they were kind of the bottle episode where they had the flashbacks to what happened in between season four and five. I think you'll see some of those kind of tools used this year, uh, yeah. just not in the capacity that the flashbacks were used in the first five seasons though yeah so um just going back to kind of a bit about yourself um how did you kind of get your start into acting what made you go down that path rather than other maybe well not easier paths but certainly less challenging paths with fewer rejections yeah. as for me <laughs> um i think since i was about five years old i wanted to be an actor i could do church plays um and then i started i transitioned to school plays and then i got into this group called Kids for People 2 when I was 13, where we would do live theater for thousands of kids throughout the city of Chicago and parts of the Midwest. Um, so I always knew I wanted to do it. Um, and when I was about 27, I moved out to L.A. to try the Hollywood thing and, you know, struggle for two years. And then out of nowhere, started booking gigs here and there and was fortunate enough to book a series on Fox called Ben and Kate in 2012 and it's kind of just been a whirlwind since then and just something like, like I said I always knew I wanted to do never really had another option or plan it was kind of this or bust and so I'm very fortunate that I actually get to be making strides in this industry and you know making something out of my career in um, Hollywood That's great, yeah um, So when you're not acting, obviously you must have some kind of a, a personal life. So what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Um, you know, when not working, how to unwind, uh, things like that. I'm a big gamer. I love playing video games. Uh, but right now I've been really working on a hip hop album I want to release at the end of this year and a screenplay I'm trying to write and a couple of TV shows I'm writing currently. Um, I'm just, I just love being 
creative and making art and putting it out there and, um, you know, kind of stepping back and getting back to it and making more and more art. Uh, so that's just kind of my MO. Um, but I also like politics, follow politics pretty hardcore. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really keep it to the entertainment arts and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the video games. For the most part. <laughs> so what games are you playing? Right now, I am all about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I literally haven't turned on my Xbox in two months. <laughs> uh, but it's just such a phenomenal, deep game. And it, it's just, I mean, one of the best games probably ever created. And you can travel with it, and it's awesome. I, I love the game so much. So I've just been really, really putting a lot of time in that. But other games I've been loving the last couple of years, like Witcher... Destiny, Witcher 3, Destiny 2, um, Tekken 7 just came out, which I was really enjoying. It was a sport fighting game, very cool. Uh, but I mean, I, I play I play everything, honestly. It's just, you know, I've been really busy this summer and traveling and whatnot, so I haven't had a chance to really get in much except for uh, the Switch. Yeah, the Switch would be ideal for a jobbing actor, wouldn't it? You can just take it wherever you want and, oh, yeah. and plug it in wherever perfect. and just get on with it. Really <laughs> yeah. Sounds cool. Obviously, you're on a TV show, but um, what other TV shows or, or films do you like to watch uh, when you get the chance? I imagine there's not an awful lot of time to binge watch whatever's on, but um, when you do get that kind of spare minute. I watch shows, for sure. Uh, right now, I'm definitely catching up on Dragon Ball Super, which is just phenomenal. Um, really loving it. Uh, Game of Thrones, obviously, Walking Dead, or two shows that I'm a big fan of, uh, Love Atlanta, Man Seeking Woman, You're the Worst. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could watch more TV, obviously, <laughs> but my schedule's kind of insane, but those are just, you know, a few of the shows I'm really into right now. Just try and keep up with them as best you can. Yeah, I mean, I DVR them, and I, I just binge as much as I can whenever I have, like, a day or two off or something like that. I just really try to get into it. <laughs> And uh, what about films? I mean, I imagine you you get even less time to go to the cinema or whatever. But the um, yeah, you know, but I I definitely make time for all the comic book movies when they come out. Um, yeah. I'm a huge scary movie fan, so whenever a good scary movie comes out, I'm definitely trying to make time for that too. Uh, but you know, like I'll, I'll see Spider Man at night and saw Wonder Woman and Guardians of the Galaxy and all that stuff like that. So I have to keep abreast on that stuff because I just grew up being a super fan of comic books <laughs> and. You know, any movies that they release in re any regard that are based off comic stories, I think, tend to make the best movies. Comic books have some of the best stories that exist in storytelling. And um, if they execute it right, you know, you're really in for a great ride. Yeah, it's a great time to be a comic book nerd. It really is. There's no shortage of things to watch. 100%. Yes. I agree with that. Yeah, so you're on a comic book show, which must be a kind of dream come true for yourself. But uh, what drew you to the the Curtis character? You know, um, when you got offered the part, what was it about him that you thought was going to be really interesting to play? Yeah, I, I liked his kind of undying loyalty for the people close to him. Um, I, I feel that way with my friends, and so that was something I really connected with. And also his, his um, geeky tech jargon and you know just really being involved into you know technology like that i used to work at geek squad so i definitely connected with him in those regards and then when i found out that he was going to become a superhero you know that was like a dream come true to me to ever get to play a role like that you know yeah. um so it was very surreal even still to this day experience and um just kind of pinching myself still and just feeling very fortunate I get to step into a role like this and play a character who, you know, is varied and has a lot of different hats he has to put on. Mm. Were you aware of the Mr. Terrific character before you took on the role or um, did you kind of go in semi-blind um, and create your own version? I was familiar with him um, from different JSA books and whatnot. I had never read his um, solo comic mind games. Uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't read that until I auditioned for it and just started doing more research. But I was definitely familiar with him. Try to stay abreast on all black superheroes because <laughs> it's not yeah. a time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, when they told me it was him, I was like, holy crap, are you serious? You know, but, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I just feel very fortunate I get to step into his shoes and bring him to life on the CW. 
Yeah, your version's a, an amalgamation of different versions of him as well, isn't he? So there's yeah. that blank slate in a sense is, um, that you got, which is uh, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, definitely agree that he's an amalgamation. Yeah. Mm. Um, are you as athletic as he is, or you know, is that a, a lot of stunt work or? I mean, wire I, work? I grew up pretty athletic. I played sports, basketball, baseball, football in high school. Um, I, the only, I've been having a couple issues as of late, the last couple of years, I've been having some rotator cuff issues, so that's kind of the only reason why I'm not super jacked right now, is um, <laughs> I keep straining my rotator cuffs, both of them, so it makes everything really hard, you can't move your shoulders, um, but it's something I'm dealing with physical therapists right now, we're just really trying to, because we're really trying to up uh, Mr. Terrific this year, and really bring a little leadership role to him and then mm-hmm. hopefully um, you know I can adhere to those things and really bring that through in the character yeah and bringing in the T-Spheres last year was the the a big step forward for him finding you know a place within the team rather than the you know because there's a tendency that everybody just kind of rushes in and fights but um, the T-Spheres make him a unique part I feel I like, like that too you know seeing Curtis kind of go through the growing pains that he went through and really having to lean into his tech to really be a person who can add value to the team. And I definitely think that's something that, you know, Mr. Terrific himself in the comic books definitely does. Like his brains is his most powerful tool. His yeah. ability to quickly learn different forms of martial art and his photographic memory and stuff like that. So I think that's a lot of stuff we're trying to bring to the table with Curtis. Uh, you know, just that tech prowess and like, you know, kind of a kick ass, you know, kind of getting there, learning how to be a better brawler, you know, too, and bring his athleticism to the forefront. So it's definitely something we're working on. Yeah, and it'd be boring if he was he nailed it first time, wouldn't it? it you know, it's much yeah, better to build up to something. To have that growth. Yeah. And he's also important because of the, the LGBT representation, um, you know, and I think it's handled so subtly and, and really well. You know, it's it's never made a big deal out of. And I think that's true of all the CW superhero shows, actually. Um, I'm guessing that's something that comes up a lot when, you know, when people are talking to you about the character and things. I mean, I imagine it's a it's a, it's a good boost for people that maybe felt unrepresented in, on television. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I, I definitely take a lot of pride in getting to play an LGBT character. I was partially raised by somebody in the LGBT community, and I have a lot of really close personal friends who are in the community that come up to me and just tell me how much they appreciate me playing this character and not playing him in a stereotypical way. He's just the person who happens to love who he loves, and that's it, you know? Yeah. So it's very, for me, very cool to play that in that type of light to not switch it up just to be me and this person just happens to love a guy and that's totally fine. No one really lived their life through their sexuality. Yeah. You know, you love who you love and you are who you are. And that's really kind of what I want to embody with Curtis is that, yeah, he loves what he loves, but you know, he still is an like, amazing inventor, a, a good friend, um, you know, a good partner when it boils down to it. That's, those are the really important qualities about himself. So that's something I, I really take pride in getting to play and getting a you know, just portray this on screen and have people be like, you know, that person is like me and I can do it. And, you know, it doesn't make you um, any less of a person because of who you love, you know? Yeah. And even when they handled the, the divorce story, which I imagine will still go on for a bit longer, um, it was just very much like any relationship breaking up rather than making a big deal out of the fact that it was a, a same-sex relationship. And, you know, I like seeing those things because it's... It's very progressive without, you know, drawing too much attention to it. It's just something that's going on, like it goes on in anyone's life. It's really good. It's really good to see. The thing I think that, like I said, I love to be able to portray on screen. Yeah. And I imagine working on Arrow is a lot of fun. You know, it seems like um, all you guys are really great with fans and things like that. Um, from videos I see at conventions, everyone seems really engaged. So, um, I mean, on the set, is it, you know, does everybody kind of play practical jokes on each other? And if so, what are the, the kind of yeah, best ones that you were aware of? It's one of the funnest uh, set environments I've ever got the a, a privilege to work on. Um, I think it all starts from the top with Stephen Amell. You know, he's just very professional and actually a very talented actor. But 
he loves to have fun too mm-hmm. on set. And I think that's just the place where we all come from. We all joke around and shoot the breeze and play jokes on each other. And also, you know, really give our all to the, to the material we're given. And it just makes for a really fun atmosphere to work in. Yeah. So what's kind of the, one of the more memorable practical jokes that you can think of that was either you played on someone or someone played on you? I mean, our practical jokes are pretty much X-rated. So I can't really <laughs> go into too many because they are not, not for kids, not for kids at all. Um, not on the blooper reel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, I don't think they can make it on the blooper reel. I honestly don't <laughs> We are crazy. We are crazy people, basically. Um, but we do have a lot of fun with each other, and we, we're all coming from a place of love and just enjoying spending 10 months with each other. And, you know, I wish I could go into details about some of the jokes <laughs> we do, but, you know, uh, they may never play those jokes with me again if I can spoil everything. Yeah, you know, so. well. But it and is I'm a really fun set and a fun yeah. environment. And I imagine having John Barrowman around uh, brought up the kind of silliness factor as well. Oh, yeah, he's the king of silliness, for sure. I mean, <laughs> his butt's, like, everywhere. <laughs> on everyone's in the you know what I'm saying? Like, John is, he, and he's such a freaking professional at its core. Like, he is ready to go as soon as they call action or whatnot. And before that, he's having so much fun, and it's really infectious and something I think I, I love to bring to a set is just, like, let's have fun, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And let's still yeah. do the work and know our lines and kill it, but let's have fun too. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, if you don't enjoy what you do, then why bother doing it, as they say? Yeah, very yeah. true. And I know you're not allowed to say anything about season six, but um, where would you like to see Curtis go in, in the season, you know, like from where he ended up at the end of season five? Uh, where, what kind of arc would you like to see him follow or any particular stories would, you'd like to see him involved in? I would like in? to see him realize be fun <laughs> to survive. <laughs> That'd be a good start, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> but I would really, you know, I would like to see him just come into his own to have more of a leadership role um, and be just like such an amazing asset to Team Arrow. You know, I would really like to see him really step into his own and, and you know, that's that's my hope. Yeah, I would actually like to see him turn up on Legends of Tomorrow for an episode or so just to kind of geek out about the time machine and things. Yeah, they action, yeah. (laughs) I mean, the crossover will be coming up, so there'll be be opportunities there. Yeah, definitely, definitely great. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, that's all I really had in terms of notes and uh, and questions that I wanted to ask. You know, I wanted to focus on Arrow as much as possible because that's what's currently going on at the moment. So the the question we always ask on this uh, podcast to all our guests is, uh, I know you're already in a superhero show, but if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? You know, I think I would like to be a shapeshifter. Um, First of all, it would be cool to play pranks on people because they think I would be people that they know and I wouldn't be. Um, but I've always been a fan of Apocalypse, and I know that's one of his main abilities, the ability to shapeshift and different body parts, change to, you know, tools and stuff like that, and I would love to have that ability. Or I would also like to have the ability to fly and have unlimited endurance, <laughs> because, you know, if you can fly, but you get tired in like three minutes, that's not really, it's like, oh man, I gotta get back now, <laughs> you know, so I just, I think that'd be pretty cool to fly around the world, and kind of taking it in from, you know, up there and you know, those would be two pretty cool abilities I would love to have. You need to be able to put up with the, the atmospheric conditions as well, thin air and all that stuff. Yeah, it's cold up there. It yeah. is cold up there. <laughs> bring a jacket. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah got to bring a jacket. Bring that fair play jacket. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, that's a great answer. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a nice little insight into what power you would like to have. So uh, thank you for that. And, um, Thank you very much for coming on to, to talk to me for a brief period. It's been, you know, for me, as speaking as a fan, it's great to have a series regular from one of my favourite shows to talk to on the show. So it's, it's, thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. I mean, um, yeah, it's been great to talk to you. And I really hope that uh, Curtis survives and uh, and then thrives afterwards. Yeah, me too. Definitely on the same page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you.
That was my chat with Echo Kellum. Speaking for everyone at Neil Before Blog and Neil Before Pod, we'd like to wish him all the best for the new season and the best of luck for all the projects he's working on. Arrow returns to screens on Thursday, October 12th for its sixth season, so stay tuned to Neil Before Blog for full reviews for every episode. Thanks to YouTuber nstens1117 for the supplied music, and if you like what you heard here, then please subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or any major podcasting app. Then join us on the next Neil Before Pod. (laughs) 